Every classroom teacher in the United States in this day and age needs to know a little something about teaching students from other countries. It doesn't matter if you're a college professor or a K-12 teacher. You need to know how to teach students who don't know a lot of English. According to the Institute of International Education's website, there were 609,923 international students in U.S. colleges and universities during the 2009-2010 academic year. And the number has been increasing every year. And according to data gathered from 2010-2011 by the Center for Immigration Studies, there are more than 50 million immigrants and their children legal and illegal in this country. This means 10.4 million students in the public school system come from an immigrant household. That's one in five public school students. Of these, 78%, that's one in four, speaks a language other than English. In this presentation, you will be introduced to different ways to teach and support your English language learners in your math class. Before we begin, it's important to know how and how not to refer to these students. In many government documents, you will see the label LEP. This stands for Limited English Proficient. While it's important for us to know what this label means, it's not the best way to refer to these students because this label does not use person-first language. In other words, it has negative connotations because it focuses on what a student cannot do. The best way to refer to this group of students is ELL, which stands for English Language Learner. Can you see the difference between LEP and ELL? ELL focuses on what the student is doing. Another acceptable name for these stu students is ESOL, English Speakers of Other Languages. In many public schools in the United States, ESL students can exit the ESL programs when they reach a minimum score on an assessment. This test normally focuses on only their general familiarity with English. It probably does not test their language ability in a math context. This means that the ESL student who is placed in grade level classrooms is most likely familiar with general English vocabulary and able to identify objects in English, communicate appropriately in social situations, and able to decode simple reading passages close to his grade level. This also means that many ESL students are not ready to tackle tasks that require knowledge of academic language, a concept first explained by Jim Cummins. Students without academic language will have a hard time mastering content areas, not only because it takes at least five years of instruction to acquire enough academic language to succeed, but also because content area mastery requires that the student be able to use English as a medium of thought. Students who are still translating will not master the content. After much research, Anna Ul Shamoe and J. Michael O'Malley, authors of the Cognitive Academic Language Learning Approach, recommend that English language learners enter grade level classes in a particular order based on the nature of the way language is presented to students. They suggest that English language learners enter mainstream science classes first because of their ability to understand and produce language is supported by traditional approaches to science lessons. The discovery and hands-on approaches used in many classroom activities in science provide ample contextual support for academic language development. Then Shimo and O'Malley say students can enter mainstream math classes because math has its own unique language, especially in solving word problems. This math language has fewer demands than the language used in other content areas, so it's comparatively easier for students to manage. After that, ELL should be introduced to mainstream social studies classes, and last, language arts, 
because the language demands in the reading material used in those classes is quite high. When ESL students are in an intensive ESL class, their teachers help them to develop the four language modalities or language skills, reading, writing, listening, and speaking. All four language modalities are used in math classes, so math teachers are also English teachers in that they require students to use listening, reading, writing, and speaking throughout the class. It is probably pretty obvious that students will use their reading skills in your class. They will need to read explanations, examples, and problems in the textbook, including word problems. All three of these features will use specialized vocabulary, another aspect of language usage. They will also need to listen to you and to their classmates, explain math concepts and principles. You will also orally dictate numbers and perhaps shorter word problems, so their listening skills must be well developed to catch all of that information. But students also produce language in your class, and you should support their efforts. They speak quite a bit, and they should get guidance and feedback from you about their attempts at it. Students will answer questions orally and ask questions for clarification. You may ask them to explain how to solve a problem. At the end of class, when you're checking for student understanding of a new concept, you may ask a student to describe the math application. Beginning and intermediate proficiency ELLs will have problems saying words for numbers and number sentences. Students take lots of notes in math class. This is writing. Many teachers also ask individuals and groups to write their own word problems. That activity calls for an integration of skills. They have to use speaking, listening, writing, reading, and math all at the same time in that group work. It is a best practice to incorporate language learning into every content area class. This inclusion helps both your native English speakers and your English language learners develop their language skills. Both teachers and students should be using more academic English in the classroom. No matter what your content area, each day's lesson should have an academic English objective based on your states, or the Common Core's language arts standards. Shamo and O'Malley support the idea of teaching academic English alongside every content area's concepts. And now, the National Council of Teachers of Math has required it. They want all students to become mathematically literate, as indicated in their goals. As a math teacher who happens to also teach language skills, you should want to make sure that your students understand you. So let's spend some time now discovering what is difficult in math for ESL students. Probably the first thing everyone thinks of is word problems. Word problems are more difficult than basic math facts and computation because word problems are highly language dependent. Students who have mastered reading comprehension and who have mastered math computation independently will not necessarily be able to solve word problems when the two skills are combined. Another problem is that students cannot use reading comprehension strategies that can be applied to reading science, social studies, and language arts texts. Reading comprehension strategies like looking for and focusing on redundancies and context clues to find meaning cannot be used in context-reduced word problems. Next, some words are hard to define orally, like the word subtractant. Other words may be familiar, but have specialized meanings, like round up, round down, square root. Some everyday words signal more than one math operation, so it is not as simple as telling students to just memorize that this word equals that operation. For example, less than can be used for subtraction and addition. It's important to acknowledge that to be equitable, ELLs have to be exposed to the same scope and sequence as native speakers. In states like Florida and California, this is mandated in the Florida Consent Decree and Lau versus Nichols. 
So don't consider excusing your ELLs for material that seems too difficult. Teach them the academic English and the math skill and they will do it. In the 1960s, David Ausubel taught us teachers that learning happens only when it is meaningful, only when new information can be connected to old information. To find out what that old information to connect to is, teachers can do research or ask students about the ways they learn or have learned math. This is an important consideration in math class when it comes to cultural differences that can affect math comprehension and performance. For example, there are differences in math symbols and their use. To write decimals in the United States, we use the point, which looks like a dot or period. But in Latin American cultures, to write decimals, they use the comma. A similar exchange happens when writing large numbers. We use commas to separate millions from thousands from hundreds. But in other cultures, they use periods to signify the same concept. For example, our number 2 and 500 one thousandths is interpreted by some foreign students as 2,501. There are also differences in problem solving procedures. Student may understand and do a problem correctly, but because their American teacher doesn't understand what he or she she's, sees on the page, points are deducted. For instance, here are two ways division is solved. You can see the United States, Haiti, and some Spanish-speaking countries in Latin America. A third cultural difference is the way different countries measure. Virtually every country besides the United States utilizes the metric system exclusively. A measurement system in which every unit has meaning when divided by 10 has little use for fractions, but there is a huge emphasis on fractions in American schools. Finally, different cultures approach math instruction in different ways. As mentioned previously, professional organizations here recommend emphasizing concepts and analysis, but in other countries, accuracy and speed based on memorization of rules and formulas is emphasized. These changes in the way that math is taught demand a communicative approach in classroom teaching. Students are now required to learn math by talking, writing, and reasoning. In this type of instruction, students have opportunities to use all four of the language modalities while thinking about math. When orally explaining math concepts and principles, use visuals and manipulatives to support listening comprehension. Teachers need to do more than write the formula on the board. We also need to spend enough time actually teaching vocabulary. Acknowledge that it's not easy because of multiple meanings. Give students real helps with this by supplementing vocabulary with manipulatives and discovery learning. Show them that less than can mean adding and subtracting. Then show them how they should know which operation is the correct one. When saying numbers or oral word problems, pause strategically between groups of information. This gives ELLs time to process. ELLs need double the wait time you give your native English speaking students. Ignoring sufficient wait time can result in a student losing interest because the class continues at a pace that the student is unable to maintain. Scaffold their output when they need it and always provide feedback. Explain directions clearly and then repeat key terms. If the student is having problems saying or writing something clearly, give a model or fill in the blank template for him to work with. After giving personalized feedback, require students to solve problems that require renewed effort when initial problem solving attempts do not succeed. Keep it cognitive. Require students to work on problems that require hypothesis testing, data collection, evaluation, and generation and discussion of alternative conclusions. Ask them to identify authentic problems from their personal world that can be solved through math and discussion. 
take advantage of the field-dependent learning styles that most ELLs from around the world favor. Let students solve problems in cooperative groups to generate success. Students can discuss their interpretation of the problem, identify steps that are necessary to find the solution, test out different approaches, and check their answers. This extended practice in English will help develop their academic language skills, their learning of math, and their thinking in English. Teach your students learning strategies to use so that they can solve problems independently. Learning strategies like organizational planning, selective attention, monitoring comprehension, self-assessment, resourcing, grouping, note-taking, elaboration of prior knowledge, deduction, induction, imagery, auditory representation, and making inferences will help. Be aware of the concept of saving face. Students from Eastern cultures will try to appear to understand the meaning of a problem or communicate that they understand how to solve the problem because they don't want to embarrass themselves and they do not want to embarrass you. You might be embarrassed because their lack of understanding shows that you didn't explain very well. When they persist in finding an incorrect solution, you need to intercede and reteach, supporting your language with visuals, manipulatives, realia, and props, as well as other verbal and nonverbal modifications. Teachers should use a varied approach when assessing math. The variety of assessments helps the teacher to get a better picture of the student's understanding. Using allowable modifications for ELLs when tests are given will help increase student scores. If you use simplified English for test instructions or in word problems, students can focus on the math rather than the language. You could provide a glossary of difficult math terms and definitions, and you could give ELLs extra time to take the test. Of course, any modifications including the use of calculators and manipulatives during testing, should be approved by the employer or and State Department of Education. To see how local schools are responding to the National Council of uh, Teachers of Mathematics call, go to the websites for Palm Beach and Broward County school districts. There are also some websites listed here covering some of the topics brought up in the lecture. I hope you are now inspired and encouraged to work with your ELLs and help them be successful.